Hello everyone, welcome to KK4Z. My name is Scott, and as you can see, I am working the night shift. I am still at Chiaha State Park, K1037. And I'm at my campground, and it is pitch black out here. And I've got just some minimal lighting, you know, just so I can see what I'm doing. But boy, when the sun went down, it got exciting. This is kind of what I got going on here. Uh, I got my 10 bands. I went up to 80, or went down to 80 meters and worked a couple stations there. And then that two meter station I worked earlier in the day gave me my 10 bands. So I have my 10 bands and I have my 10 um, contacts for each day. I am in day two or it's the Saturday Zulu day. It's about 1030 at night. So I'm about two and a half hours into the new day. And I, I went down to 30 meters, which is where I am now. And it was exciting. <laughs> I actually had DX chasing me. I'm putting out my CQ POTA CQ out there. And I had other countries contacting me on my little five watts. That's pretty cool. You know, for those of you that, that understand, you know, you know, getting DX to chase you on five watts. That's pretty cool. And I had, uh, let's see, I had Greece, Slovenia. Denmark, Germany, France, and uh, one others. I, I chased a few DXs, so I got a bunch of DX. And, uh, but yeah, th 30 meters was dead all day, and then about 9 o'clock I dropped back to check on it, and I, this is where I've been ever since. It's, it's hopping. <laughs> Later on tonight I'll go back down to 20 and see what's going on there, but for right now I'm staying right here. All right, that was just a quick report of what's going on working the night shift, making those night moves, as Bob Seeger used to say. And uh, I'll check back later. All right, everyone. Well, this is day two. It's uh, somewhere near 2 o'clock in the morning. I think it's about 10 to 2. And while I had things on my mind about this SDR control for ICOM software. I thought I'd just go ahead and, and do a quick video while I'm thinking about it. Uh, I do have some nits. Uh, some are yeah, a little bit serious. Um, I think they're all fixable. The first thing is the app will randomly close. Uh, there's there doesn't seem to be any rhyme to reason it can just be sitting here just like you're looking at it and then it disconnects from the radio and it takes you about sometimes 30 seconds or 45 seconds to um, let me fix something here real quick I usually operate kind of low all right and It, it just randomly closes, and I've lost a couple of QSOs because of that. Um, not a lot. I think I'm probably coming up on 200 Qs, and um, you know, maybe maybe lost three to six. I don't know for sure. I'm just trying to find a clear channel to call my CQs where other people aren't but it just randomly closes and, and I don't know why it does it and it's it's just a hassle to get back in I have a couple times I got so frustrated I just turned my radio off I closed out the iPad I rebooted everything and then it would work for a while and then it would just start randomly closing so I don't know what the cause of that is I mean I'm my iPad is never more than about two foot away from the radio. So, and I'm not doing anything else with the iPad or the radio. So I don't know why it does that. But that, that's one nit I have. The, um, another nit I have is 
when you call a station that's calling CQ and somebody else got there first, it'll tell you that that the DX station answered another call and they're going to pause it. Well, that's well and good. However, there's no real easy way to override that. And why that becomes important is, from what I can tell with this app, it waits until it sees the DX station. And what I mean by DX is anybody not me that I'm trying to talk to, um, to call CQ again. Which is well and good, except other people are pouncing, you know, before they call CQ. Like like when someone's saying 73, somebody will send their call sign in, which yeah, I have no problems with. But this app will wait. And so you could sit there and go through four or five six other people, you know, calling in front of you, so to speak. And because the, because the um, app doesn't see the CQ, it just stays paused. Now, you can force it sometimes by mashing on the, uh, this button over here, the transmit button a couple times, and turn it red. But it's just not easy. So either, either the override needs to, either needs to be easier to fix or he needs to change it from waiting for a CQ to maybe waiting for a 73 because I lost a couple of, of real DX contacts because I couldn't force it at the right time. And then the last nit is sometimes when you are finishing up a CQ and you're getting like to the 73 part, well, somebody else will call and the app will go to that new station before you have a chance to log the old station. So you have to be careful of that. And um, I don't know what the fix is for that. But it has tried to do this to me several times. I think I may have even lost a queue or two because it went to the next station before I had a chance to log it. So what I try and do now is when I start seeing the 73s like this, I go ahead and log it. And then it may, it may or may not ask me again to log it, which in this case I just X out of it. But it has... You know, I, I almost messed up. And I think a couple times I may have messed up. I couldn't go back and get it. So those are kind of the nits I'm seeing now. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's good. I mean, I've been using this thing pretty steady for since 9, 10 o'clock yesterday morning. So it's getting a good workout and I'm getting a real good feel for it. I think it's got a lot of potential. It just needs to fix a couple things. So I'm going to do this in a video, and then maybe uh, when I when I publish the video, I will also contact the uh, the developer and let him and let him see the video, so he can kind of see what I'm talking about and ask me some questions or whatever. But I, I do like the program. It is kind of fun because I can operate. This iPad and my radio and all my stuff off the same battery. I don't need a, a an AC adapter or nothing. It works really well. So that's it for now. Uh, and we'll say 73. All right, let's try this again. All right, it's about 5 o'clock in the morning. And this is one of those instances where the software just kind of closes down sometimes it goes it closes all the way down sometimes you'll get a screen something like this and then to get it to go again you have to tap and you'll get that 
than you. Okay, that time it only did it in two. Sometimes it takes four or five, six times to get it going. Of course, when you go back to your FT8, all your stuff is gone because you have to hit the, because you're restarting the program. So if you were in the middle of a QSO, that has disappeared. And hopefully the other guy is still pinging you when you get back on. And you can pick up where you left off. But that's one of the problems, that, one of the issues that we have with this is this just randomly shuts itself off. And there's, you know, there's there's nothing you can do. And you, you tend to lose your day. I guess I, I probably lost, I'm over 200 cues. And, you know, I probably lost somewhere between three and six cues because this thing shut down in either in the middle of a queue so or, at the right at the end when I was trying to save it, so it's just something that need. I I think it's something that just needs to be fixed. I you know, I still like the software. It just needs a couple things fixed. All right, so this is a minute or two later, and the the program shut all the way down to the app button. So we have to start it up again. So I have to do this. It says I'm not currently connected. And it says uh, your radio is not responding. You got to tap again. Up, didn't work that time. Up, didn't work that time. Let's wait a few seconds. All right, that time it kicked back in. And this time I have to go back to the, the whole sub menu. Then I have to open up FT8 again. And then to start receiving, I have to hit that. Of course, again, you lose all your QSOs and data. So it's kind of like starting from scratch. It's a hassle. Um, again, I think it's something that can be fixed. But until then, it can be aggravating. We'll see you later. All right. Well, this is a, the last video of the series of the second day. It's a, a little after 10 o'clock. I managed to get 250 cues done from all over the world. And I'm hot. And I'm just ready to go home to this place. It's a great place for radios, but the reason why it is because it's got open spaces and the open spaces let the sun in. So it is hot. And so this is just kind of a final recap. This is the antenna that I used. It's an ICOM AH705 tuner. Over here is a 17 foot counterpoise. And this is a 29, the 29 and a half foot antenna. And it just goes all the way up to the top. All right. And then this is the coax. And then this is the tuner control cable. Uh, it worked really, really well. I mean, when you, when I, when I post a, the uh, Q, QSO map to my blog, you will see all the places I've been. And I've... <laughs> I've been everywhere, man, as Johnny Cash would say. Uh, it was a good night. Uh, band conditions were wide open. I stayed up all night because of that. Um, I just couldn't. I just couldn't put it down. It was. Uh, it was really good. And now this morning, the band conditions are. Man, I'm gonna say marginal. They're okay, uh, but not like it was last night. I was working everybody everywhere, and so. As you can see, I already started uh, taking things down. Um, I've also had enough of that FT8 software, the uh, the SDR control for ICOM. I really like the app. I like the UI, the user interface. I like I like a lot of how it's laid out. There's just a couple things that needs to change, but the biggest thing is this thing just randomly shuts down. And when it shuts down, or if it disconnects from the radio, 
when you go back into it, you're basically starting from scratch again. So if you were halfway through a QSO, more than likely it's gone when it, when you, you know, when you come back to it. So uh, that that's really got to be fixed. I think until that that gets fixed, I'm not sure I'm going to use it that much. It, it's okay. You know, like I said, I, I gave it a workout. I gave it almost a 24 hour workout. So it, it had a workout and I got to, I got to see all the bugs and, you know, maybe for the casual user, you may not run across that, but I like the concept. I like, I like the way it's laid out. I like that it works with an iPad. It just it has a couple problems that just need to be worked out. And, uh, you know, I can't, at this, at this point in the game, I can't say go out and get it. But it is pretty cool, and I'm hoping that the developer will, you know, continue to work on it and make it better. Um, I know it's a, it's a complex piece of software, and it's just going to take time. But I'm hoping. I'm like I said, I'm going I'm to keep checking back, and you know, when it gets better, I'll try it again. Uh, the ICOM 705, of course, worked as advertised. Uh, the one thing that surprised me was I brought my. Uh, you see it back there, back there my biannual power uh i think it's called a bp bpp 160 uh solar generator it's a, i think it's a 16 amp hour battery it's got plugs you know, so you can plug ac into it it's got plenty of stuff to run qrp and it can, i have a 40 watt solar panel that goes with it and so yesterday when i set it up i put the i put the solar panel up on top of my truck window on the other side facing up and at nighttime when it finally got dark I think I still had like four bars left out of five because the solar panel was keeping up with it so next time I come out you know I'll just bring that and maybe one smaller battery for just in case I don't think I need any more because that that was powering everything uh, my fan my iPad the radio the tuner I mean what more what more can what more can he ask for uh the accommodation where i was sitting was good this is the first time i used it like this i like sitting you know this way instead of this way like i did the last time it gives me more room for my legs and i can get in and out easier too because that that uh, flight deck is movable i don't really i don't have it tied down just the weight of the stuff in the in the in the back there is what's keeping it down that in the low overhang so uh everything worked well uh, that's that's gonna be it for now uh, i'm supposed to have some friends come up to, to operate this afternoon i don't know if they're gonna make it or not they're supposed to be here at nine and ten o'clock and it's after ten so uh anyhow um that's it i just want to give you one last peek of the of the antenna uh, this is I think this has become my favorite antenna. I think it's uh, um, slipping slipping uh, ahead of the uh, Frank antenna. They're both really good, but I believe this one's just a little bit better because it's a little bit bigger. And when I use it with the AH705 tuner, uh, this is what this tuner was designed for. You know, it's just like it's just like the AH4. And um, it does a great job. It really does. So I'm real, I'm real happy with the way I have this set up. Again, the, the pole I was right, it's an MFJ 1910. It's a 33 foot uh, mast. I did notice here that the wind was blowing last night. I'm sorry. The wind was blowing last night. And so there's a little bit of scoring. So I'm gonna take some uh, Gorilla Tape and just wrap it around it to kind of prevent it from eating through. Uh, when I, I bought this used from a guy for like 25 bucks about 10 years ago and you know I think today they're over a hundred so uh, <laughs> gotta take care of this one all right well that's it it was a good activation for me uh, I don't know what's gonna happen today this is the support your parks weekend and when I was on the air a little while ago there there wasn't didn't seem like a whole lot of support out there maybe it'll it'll come on later when people get out to the parks either that or the band conditions are bad enough that you know it's just really local stuff uh anyhow i hope everybody has a good time i hope they enjoy their parks i hope they get everything they need to make their activations i hope i get the i worked as many as i could 
Um, I always try to do POTA, but sometimes, you know, two compromised stations trying to work each other just doesn't work. So, all right, that's it. I'm going to put this together either right now or a little bit later and uh, get it started uploading. So everybody take care. Uh, 73s and thanks for watching.